When the sun goes down, the stars come out. From deep in the heart of Texas, it's the star at night. Coming to you from the Cowboys facility at the Star in Frisco. With your hosts, Kelsey Charles and David Hellman. What's up, guys? Kelsey Charles and David Hellman here, and you are tuning in to another episode of The Star at Night. I don't think this show is airing at night right now, but we're going to call it that anyways. Dave, happy yeah, Friday. We've been calling it that, but like, does it, does it ever truly air at night? You know, like, like, a no, no, it doesn't. The sun is always up, but that's okay. PGIF, <laughs> hey, how's it going? Semantics. Uh, I'm good. I am good. It's actually kind of fun because we've had some news this week. And uh, I would, uh, I know, right? Long time coming. The off season is always really yeah. fun for me. And repeating the Dak contract story kind of got, I don't know, a bit old for me. So I'm glad that's done. And now we actually have new people in the building. I want to talk to you about that. Free agency is in full swing. There have been reports that there were visits from guys. Uh, secondary has been a big topic of discussion this week, whether it's going to pro days, which we'll touch on that in a minute, but also bringing some veteran guys in the building. So uh, DeMonte Casey, Malik Cooker, and J. Ron Curse were actually in Dallas. One of those guys, Curse, left with a one-year deal. So it looks like we've got some added depth. But I want to know, you know, what does that mean with the signing of Curse? And then we also talked about the Keanu Neal reuniting with Dan Quinn. Do you feel like that's going to impact any additional signings? You, do you feel like there's going to be more veteran signings coming? Or are we done and focused on the draft? David. Churning up that roster, baby. Churn that depth. The second week of free agency is where the Cowboys try to make the magic happen. Um, and the, I mean, there's always two sides to this coin, right? Like you can be really excited. Keanu Neal is a pro bowler, a five-year NFL yeah. veteran. He's got 300 plus career tackles. Uh, J. Ron Curse has started and played plenty of NFL games. He's been in the NFC North. Mike McCarthy has a lot of familiarity with him. The other side of that is, well, these are still bargain one-year signings. These are the same types of deals we saw them give out to guys like Ha Ha Clinton Dix last year. I completely understand people's skepticism. But at the same time, like I, I think these, these, this is a better class of player that we're talking about. I'm really excited about what Keanu Neal can bring to this team. And yes, to your point, I'm just gonna take a stab in the dark. I don't think the Cowboys are done. Uh, Jaron Kurtz, he's started games in his career. He is not a regular starter. I think that's more of a depth special team signing. Malik Hooker, former first round pick. Demonte Casey who had seven interceptions for the Falcons two years ago when he played for Dan Quinn. I think one of those guys is going to wind up here, and that would be very exciting for yours truly. Two ball-hawking free safeties. Yes, a ball-hawking free safety. That's a phrase <laughs> that has not applied to the Dallas Cowboys in a long time. I really hope they can get one of those deals done, and I kind of feel like they will. Ooh, I feel like you're getting some foreshadowing here, you guys. Um, but I want to talk about that because I feel like, as a Cowboys fan, uh, it's very well known that, or at least speculation-wise, this team hasn't historically valued the safety position, but we are going full safety this week. So how much credence are you giving that focus on the safety position as secondary in general to the emergence of you know Dan Quinn bringing in his new direction to the table? I'm going to say the same thing I just said because I think it's fair. It's very encouraging what they're doing. Keanu Neal. Good player, Pro Bowl, strong safety. There's talk of him playing a little linebacker, a little bit of a hybrid guy. Again, Malik Hooker and, and DeMonte Casey, these are guys that have done it at a high level. But at the same time, we're bargain hunting. We're talking about like three, four, five million dollar one year deals. Like this is not breaking the bank for the best safeties in the game. And I am curious. There's a lot of reason to think, you know, this is evidence that the Cowboys might prioritize safety in the draft, but wow, I'd really like to see it to believe it because I feel like I say that every year and it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. So stay tuned. Like I said, there's reason for optimism, but like, I'm not, I'm not buying in just yet. I need to see a little bit more. Yeah, I feel you. I feel like this is a, just another page out of the Cowboys playbook. Like we've seen this before. So this we is know how they operate. 
like I could read this book with my eyes closed. You know, like it's like a it's like a Bible in the in the nightstand at a hotel. Like it's always there. I just open it. I'm like, okay, they signed an offensive tackle. Okay, they made some journeyman signings on the D line. Kicking the tires on some former first round picks who haven't lived up to the billing. Like this is what they do. It is as predictable as the sunrise and hopefully it works out better this year than it has in the past. Well, that's not the only movement on the defensive side of things this week. We heard from Mike McCarthy that uh, Tyrone Crawford is indeed hanging it up after nine years. So I feel like that opens up more opportunity for additional depth, whether that's through free agency or if we're going to continue to focus on that position in the draft. So um, lots of things to be looking forward to as we continue out through this offseason. Listen, we're going to go to break, and when we come back, we're going to do some buy and sell. But shout out my guy, Ty. Tyrone Crawford, the writing's been on the wall that he was probably headed for retirement for a while. Nine long years in the Cowboys organization. There are some people that are going to try to belittle his contributions, and I say, to hell with you. He was the (laughs) fourth longest tenured Cowboy on the team. At the end of the season, put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into it. Moved from end to tackle, back to end. Did a little bit of everything. Never complained about it. Shouts out to Tyrone Crawford. Hope you enjoy your time. We love you, 98. We will be right back after this. Dave so the Cowboys are wheeling and dealing this week gosh that is so lame that I said that I'm doing it anyways all right is wheeling Uh, and dealing even is wheeling and dealing even like the right way to describe it it's more like the only way I could have made that better is if I would have had you know the the side part right I could have really leaned into my oldness um anyways I'm gonna ask you to put your GM hat on for a minute because I'm going to give you the checkbook and give you the opportunity to make some of your own deals, if you will. Yes. I just feel like this is. Yeah, because we're trying to have some fun, and that's not what Cowboys free agency is all about. So give me the money, and I'll make it fun. All right. All right. First up, I'm going to show you an offer, and you're going to tell me deal or no deal. Uh, We've got a familiar face on the docket, Ryan Kerrigan. How about we yes. bring yes. Ryan Kerrigan yes. to the yes. right team in the NFC East? Two years, $9 million. Are you going to make this deal? Okay, so just to be a fun sponge for a second, I don't think Ryan Kerrigan would do this. I think Ryan Kerrigan probably still thinks he can start, and he's probably right, honestly. He had five and a half sacks on arguably the best defensive line in the league last year as a rotational guy. So. He probably doesn't want to come here, but oh, I would make him tell me no. Because you know what? I am I am sick of cowboy players hitting free agency and going to play for Washington. What if we did it the other way? Ryan Kerrigan, come rotate with Randy Gregory and Demarcus Lawrence. Give the Cowboys a veteran presence. Win some football games. And I'll stick it to your old team that drafted all those stud pass rushers in place of you, too. It sounds amazing, and yes, I would do that deal in a heartbeat. So fast. (laughs) So fast. That was really uncomfy. Yeah, same. You're uncomfy. You're uncomfy. You know what would be uncomfy? Is if Ryan Kerrigan was pressuring the quarterback for this team. It would be great. (laughs) Ryan, call it. Bring it on. Yeah. Um, All right. So how about we talk about another guy that we could go ahead and take from the WFT? Alex Smith the medical miracle we have another one of those on our team i feel like that's super our brand as well we know that dak is the quarterback but we also know that we lost andy to chicago so what about bringing alex down here for a one-year i don't know three million dollar deal come sit behind number four 
Deal, 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 deal. Such a deal. And by, by the way, Alex Smith wants a chance to be a starter, but I'm they looking. I'm looking for that team out there that still needs a starting quarterback because last time I checked, the Chicago Bears hired the Red Rifle. I don't know where Alex Smith is going to get that opportunity. So, hey, man, come on down to Texas where there's no state income tax. Dak Prescott talked at his press conference about how much he admires you and how you helped him come back from his own injury. And, hey, you might have a shot. Like, I know we're, we're in this uncomfortable place, like, Washington has spent decades trying to cherry pick our cast offs to contend. The, br the brutal reality is that they won the division. The Cowboys are trying to get to where they were last year. So give me that experienced veteran quarterback who has a history with Mike McCarthy as well, by the way. Alex, who are we kidding here, buddy? Come on down and join the family. I would That would be so much fun. Come on, Alex Smith. Come on, let's go. Team Petty for life. I am loving this energy all right let's keep it going um we all know that we like to talk about guys from the secondary who have been spent some time in seattle but i'm not going to talk about the one that has been a hot topic last couple please of don't years. say that name please don't I say that name i won't do that to you uh <laughs> yet but how about we turn the tables and talk about richard sherman sherm in the building give him i don't know 17 million two years, something like that. He can come coach up these young guys, Trayvon Diggs. Uh, hopefully a new guy that we get in the draft. He can learn from the greatest. What are your thoughts? Where's, where, I'm gonna do like my Meghan Markle deal or no deal. Like I open the, is, was that the right show? Deal or no deal? I think it was. <laughs> no deal. Like it's a it's a $5 bill. No, I listen, Sherm's going to the hall of fame. He's an all decade player. So much respect for him, but you got a shiny top 10 draft pick that you can use to go get a guy by the name of Patrick Sertan or J.C. Horn. Cornerback is a young man's game. It just is. Like, you don't find very many good ones that are even over the age of 30, let alone Richard Sherman, who's getting up over that. Uh, I got to say, no deal. No disrespect to the Shermanator, but oh. let's get young. Let's get young. Let's get what about for like a little cheaper? If we got like a bit of a bargain. I hate that he already has his own show because I could I could try and pull the whole, well, Jerry's going to help you get your TV deal, but he already has a podcast, yeah. I think, I'm with Coward. You, Richard, Sherman, Richard Sherman doesn't need anybody's help to like establish his brand. He took care of that a <laughs> long time ago. Uh, and the answer is still no, just because I think you have a really unique opportunity. You already have three corners. You already have Trayvon Diggs, Jordan Lewis, and Anthony Brown. Now you can go draft a young badass. And again, younger is always going to be better in the NFL. So Richard Sherman, you're awesome. I'm not convinced it fits here. Sorry, buddy. All right. Uh, how about we go stay on the defensive side of things? We're going to move a little forward and uh, defensive line. How about I dangle one Geno Atkins in front of you? All pro, pro bowler. We just lost a guy in that position. I feel like, you know, we've struggled in that area a bit. Doesn't feel like it's the most concrete. Are you going to sign a deal? One year, $6 million? Like, that's nothing. I hate myself for saying this, but I think I, think I would pass. I Injuries have gotten, oh. in, they've caught up to Geno Atkins over the last couple of years. Actually, you know what? No, no, bring him on. I changed my mind because you're yeah. like that. That's the state of the defensive tackle position for this team is that it's a lot like Malik Hooker, honestly. If there's even a chance that you can recapture some of that magic, I say go for it. The problem is Geno Atkins has been in the NFL for a long time. He's gotten dinged up. I have a feeling his best years are probably behind him, but guess yeah. what? A lesser year from Geno Atkins is better than most of what we've seen from the Cowboys pass rush over the years. So I would still probably kick those tires for that price. I don't think the Cowboys It doesn't take much to upgrade. <laughs> that's sad. No, no, it is, it is, but that's, it's where we are. It's where we are. I would do it. I would do it. <laughs> Well, I appreciate the fact that you went garage sailing with me. That was fun. Uh, we will see if the Cowboys take our advice and make a few of those happen.
Come on, Dave. Um, all right. Well, we are going to talk about some guys who might be a little bit more viable, but this is going to be via the draft process. Dave, I know you are knee deep in all things draft, and there are a few hot names that uh, had a couple things to say this week. We're going to talk about that coming up next. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show, and Kelsey, you have done your best to make me talk about free agency, but you know what? It's kind of boring. Free agency is kind of boring when you cover the Dallas Cowboys. You know what's not boring? What draft is that? Season. Draft season, my friend. And it's always draft season, but like it's really draft season now. We are in the nitty gritty, and if I it's needed any proof, yes, it is. It is my Super Bowl. It's the closest I've come to covering a Super Bowl. Maybe if the Cowboys make the right decisions this month, it'll help me get closer to a real Super Bowl. No pressure, guys. <laughs> the point being yeah. is that, Where listen, is that? W- Will McClay is going to Pro Days, baby. He was in Tuscaloosa looking at Patrick Sertan at Alabama's Pro Day. He was in Columbia okay. looking at J.C. Horn. The Cowboys are hunting cornerbacks. Tell me I'm wrong. They are definitely hunting cornerbacks, Dave. They spent Tuesday looking at Patrick Sertan, Wednesday with J.C. Horn. Um, But I don't know if you noticed this. J.C. Horn seems to be emerging in this discussion regarding who is the leading candidate at cornerback for at least the Dallas Cowboys. I feel like we've been talking about Farley and Sertan, but uh, Horn put up some figures this week. He wanted to make sure we were not forgetting him in this conversation. Do you think his pro day is going to change things and maybe truly align him a little bit more evenly with the Patrick Sertans when we're having these types of conversations? Talk Here's, this is what happens. I will, I will teach you something about the draft process. We in the media, yes, we're sensei. slow, we're <laughs> dumb. We're behind everything. I'll, I'm going to go as far as to tell you, J.C. Horn has probably been in that conversation this entire time in the eyes of NFL scouts and evaluators. But when he goes out on the indoor track at South Carolina and runs a 4-3-9 and posts a 41-and-a-half-inch vertical, dumbasses like me, our eyebrows perk up and we say, oh, okay, J.C. Horn. And meanwhile, the scouts are all like, yeah, duh, you like we know this. So, yeah, like, we're, we're catching up. That's what's happening here. And I'm absolutely not going to be surprised if he goes right in that range, like somewhere between, like, 10 and 15. It's, it could even be the first cornerback off the board. I kind of doubt it, but I think it's possible. And I do I not think it's a coincidence that the Cowboys' number one draft official was at both of those workouts. I just don't think it was. Um, I don't think so either. They say follow the money. I would also say you should follow Will McClay when we are talking about the draft. Um, Yeah, I mean, Horn's impressive. His Auburn game alone earned him SEC Defensive Player of the Week awards. Um, I still personally have Pavlov's response whenever I'm talking about Sertan. I don't think I will never get rid of that, um, and I'm okay with that. But I want to go back to the Caleb Farley conversation because – This is a guy who didn't actually have a pro day and because he had to go into surgery this week, have a back procedure, uh, a micro discectomy. And so basically they had to remove a damaged part of a herniated disc and they're saying they think he's going to be ready by training camp. So while he didn't perform and he also sat out all last season because of COVID, you know, he's 2019 ACC first team. We know what this guy can do on tape. Are you feeling like that is going to set him back, though? Or are you still thinking, hey, no, he's a major contender in this conversation despite having surgery this week? 
it's a tricky question to answer and the reality is I think there's 32 different answers around the league. Like every different front office and their medical staff is going to have a different opinion. There are going to be some teams that say he should be ready to go by training camp. This is totally fine. We love him. We think he fits our scheme. We'll draft him right where we always would. And then there are probably some other teams that are going to ding him severely. Yeah, I mean, you talk, this is not the first injury issue to crop up. He did not play in 2020. That's a lot of things working against you. And I don't know how far he's going to fall. But I'd be surprised if he's drafted in the same range that we were talking about before, uh, you know, which is to say like top 10 in the NFL draft. I would be, I think I'd be surprised if that happens at this point. But I do still think there are going to be plenty of teams that see the value, especially if he starts to slide. So I have a feeling it'll work out okay for him in the end. Well, obviously lots to keep track of as we continue to maneuver this off season and draft season. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. We do appreciate it. Um, we'll be back next week. I think we have a pretty special guest for you. TBD on that. We will not show our hand at the moment. But in the meantime, for David Hellman, producer Caden, I'm Kelsey Charles. This has been another episode of Start Night. See you guys next time.